Hello, I'm here today to talk about uh, records. Um, compare them to CDs and to digital music like you would find on your phone. Other digital music, CDs also digital. Um, and uh, basically to talk about the advantages of records. And uh, a lot of people have come to defend records. Uh, a lot of people are like poo-pooing records. Oh, what do you want? An old, you know, disc that you have to physically put something on. Why don't you just want to listen to music anywhere, everywhere on your Bluetooth thing? So, I'm going to talk a little about that. It's, a, it's really complicated, uh, actually. And so, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. And I'm not going to cover everything that I want to or everything I should. But it's just to get that out there. Um, a lot of people defend records saying, oh, they're cool, or, uh, oh, I like the Pops and Crackles. And that's kind of, uh, for me, that's like the wrong defense. Those, you know, the, the Pops and Crackles and, the, and the, the, the fact that it's a flawed analog thing is, uh, is nothing to uh, really celebrate in my mind. But what is, um, is it is analog. It's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a photograph, uh, you know, it's an optical photograph instead of a digital photograph. So let's first talk about digital and analog. Um, so if you have a record that was made, you know, recorded, mixed, mastered, and uh, released before the 80s, it's probably completely analog. Uh, that means you're, you're, there is no uh, bit rate depth or um, samples or anything. If you could hear it, the definition goes to infinity. Um, and then digital music came around, the CD. It was invented in 1979. Um, it was, uh, um, at the time, really high quality digital music. But by today's standards, in studios, we usually work at, um, we'll say, so a CD is 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. In studios, it's not common to uh, work at at least 24 bits, sometimes 32, and uh, the sample rates of 192 kilohertz or 96 instead of just the. So basically, you don't have to understand all those numbers, but just in multitudes better definition. So, um, digital music uh, is kind of like digital photography. When digital photography first started and people were taking their cell phone, flip phone photos around, you could see like how flawed they were. Now digital photography has gotten to a point where it's comparable. It's not the same, but you, it's not flawed because it's digital. The same thing about music. Um, when MP3s first came around, I remember it, the late 90s, early 2000s, they sounded bad. I mean, you could hear bad compression, bad noises in the background. Uh, it was pretty obvious that you, you took something that was good and made it worse. Now, digital music, especially, you know, streaming formats and all that stuff, it's gotten pretty good. And it's not so obvious you're listening to something that has had information taken from it and, you know, pushed down and reduced. We'll talk about compression in a little bit. But, came here to talk about records. So, let's go back to the record. Um, the most important thing I want to talk about is something that records and CDs actually share. I think this is the most important thing. When digital music became downloadable, and you could listen to any song anywhere at, uh, for 99 cents or whatever, or for free, um, it actually lost a bit of music. The music itself seemed to lo lose some value. So it, when you go out and buy a CD or a record, you were in the store, you had to go somewhere. You had to look at it. You had to make your decision. Now, people are like, wow, that's so inconvenient. You know, why are you were romanticizing this? Because it's not just that. It's when you took it home and put it on and you listened to it. And your first reaction was like, huh? what's going on here? You listen to it again. And you listen to it a third time because you bought this thing with your own money. It was your decision. And you're like, you know, someone told me this was good, I'd better listen, and, or, or I, I better listen just because I'm not getting something here. And then you would grow to like things. You would listen to songs on the, the B side, you know, songs on the back of the record. Uh, so you, you, you bought the record for the hit, 
and then you get deeper into the music or the artist. This is so hard to do with digital. I mean, you can download an entire record, but it's still the, the widespread availability makes it so that instead of going out every week and buying one record and taking it home and teaching yourself how to listen to it, you almost, uh, you know, it's so convenient and it's so uh, cheap and easy that you can just move on, swipe left swipe right or whatever the cliche is for that I don't know I don't. but um, so that's number one you buy a record you take it home you experience it you know the the kind of um, ritual of putting on the record and then sitting in front of a, a specific unit that that plays you this thing and enjoying it in that space and time is really it's a great thing for enjoying music and I personally have found it harder. I'm someone who's lived on both sides of that world, you know, from the entirely analog world and now the entirely digital world. I actually find it harder to select and enjoy music in the digital realm. It's a little overwhelming. I put up my my whatever on my phone or iTunes or something, and I just look at all the CDs there, uh, CDs, all the albums that all the CDs that I imported into it. Um, I probably have 1,200 CDs, maybe more, that I collected one at a time uh, over the years. And um, I just get a little overwhelmed. I overlook some things. It's difficult. So that was number one. Um, the actual act of uh, having something in your hand that is, has some sort of rarity to it, that has a physical manifestation you can interact with, it helps you enjoy the music. Now, let's talk about the record and the advantages to the sound. I talked about uh, digital, you know, completely analog music being um, advantageous because it never got turned into digital and turned back. Uh, but even um, digital music that gets put on records, uh, new records that were digitally mastered or even digitally recorded but come out on a record, there's still an advantage to that. And that is, a record does have and, and more narrow width to the equalization. And it has a bit of an equalization curve to it naturally. It dives off on the bottom and dives off on the top, kind of what we call a frown EQ curve. And that to us is something very natural. And as a matter of fact, when people are digitally mastering things and intending to put them out digitally or CD, that kind of, you know, curve is actually put into, that equalization is kind of put into music. Because if you have all this you know, you're like, ooh, I want my bass to pump or whatever, but if you if everything went all the way down to the bottom of your hearing and all the way up to the top of your hearing, it's a little overwhelming. So the sound of the record is um, is nice because it does have that little, it's in that little package. It's a little less, just a little less in the low end, a little less in the sizzle. Um, but also... Um, probably more importantly, uh, the, the record, um, uh, how to put this easily. All right, let's talk about compression. There are two kinds of compression. One is um, audio compression, where we take a signal and we squish it and turn it down. And turn the lows up and the bottoms down so you can hear everything well. There are no peaks. There are no things you can't hear. And uh, compression is used to make things loud or appear to be louder at the same volume. And now in digital music, and as speaking as someone who does digital mastering, you have to push everything to its limit. Everything has to, it's a competition. Who can be the loudest? Because if your song comes on, whatever, the, the, the shuffle on the radio, and it isn't as loud as the others, it will sound not as good, even though it is as good. Um, so, in order to do that, the dynamic range is limited because we squish the music and then we enlarge it to the position. So whenever you have these these things that go up and down and up and down, we take them all, we squish them down so that they go like this instead, and then we uh, stretch them out so they're as loud as possible. So this whole area is filled with the music. I do it all the time when I when I work in the studio because. Um, that's what people expect. A record has a physical limitation. 
there's only so much you can stuff on a record before it malfunctions. Therefore, there is less compression used in mastering for records than for CDs or digital music. And therefore, the dynamic range is more hearable. There is a little more depth to the sound because you can't squish it anymore. It's not as loud on front, but you just turn up your volume a little more on the, on the stereo and you can get louder. So there's an equalization difference. And most importantly, there's a compression and limiting difference. And I will say, and it's, it's happened, it happened to me recently, I put on, let's see what I have here, yes. Oops, the phone's ringing. Sorry about that, the phone rang. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, I was about to say, this Ryan Adams Gold, uh, which is, uh, I bought on CD originally. I really enjoy it, it's a great record, great album. I bought the record recently, knowing it's probably been digitally mastered. Uh, he did a lot of analog recording, but I don't know if this is one that, that was necessarily analog record analog. But uh, anyway, I listened to this, and I'm like, oh, I didn't notice that before. And I got out the CD and I threw it in. And there is an, there's an overall equalization difference. And what it is, what the difference is, is just almost like uh, uh, just a relaxing little bit of air inside of it. It's because of the less compression thing, but it's because of the equalization thing. It's because of the analog. And what analog does, even if you record something digitally or master it digitally and then put it into the analog world, analog actually melts the butter over the top of the muffin. It takes all the all the edges, the, the sharp edges that are made by samples, tap, 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 sample, 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 and it blurs them together. So even though you have something that may have originated in digital, it's still improved upon by listening to it on a record. So that's number two, a sound quality thing. Um, well, maybe that's enough for today. Oh, let's talk a little about this stuff. Listen to music on your phone. Listening to music on your computer. Um, because uh, I got a lot to say about it. Um, but mostly, what well, we're talking about sound quality. You'll understand, and you probably know, you took a CD, which is by today's standards a low quality digital format. Um, because the internet was slow in 1998 or 99, because um, hard drives were small, the MP3 became very popular. Uh, the compressed sound. Uh, here we have the other kind of compression, which is not audio compression, but it's digital compression. It's just taking little bits of information that the computer thinks isn't important and throwing them out. Um, so, uh, so like in something digital, if you have one zero zero one, it can take that zero zero and just call it a call it something. So this, it doesn't take the space of two zeros anymore. It just takes a little less space. Um, and so uh, it's digital compression, and it just, you know, they take out little bits of information that it will represent to itself to put in later when it listens back to it. But it doesn't always come back right. It's kind of like Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. It comes back, but it's not the same. Um, it's a little evil. <laughs> so, um, as I said earlier, compression has gotten... Uh, digital compression, uh, digital audio files that are compressed, which are most of the files you're listening to. If it's not on a CD or not CD quality, AIF, WAV quality, it's, it's even a lower quality digital signal than the CD, which is 1979 technology. It is kind of low quality compared to what is available in this world in digital. Um, in uh, the uh, in the audio in the, in the film world, uh, digital kind of took a different path. They made the D, the DVD and they made like a higher resolution home format. And uh, but the CD was the the highest resolution consumer digital format that was ever made. And ever since then, all these things are compressed. Now, um, listening to digital music uh, doesn't actually uh, do any real harm, but. Uh, literally, and this is all, I'm not a scientist, but your brain listening to this thing that is just, uh, that's been warped a little bit. We don't perceive it when we hear it, but we perceive it 
at a level, a deeper level in our mind. We kind of hear that there's something missing. Um, it's the way of the world now. Uh, get used to it, I guess, is what you should tell me. It's uh, Digital audio is just so much more convenient that uh, it's going to be when you watch movies and TV, when you're listening to music. I turned on a radio station, you know, flipping through radio stations in my car, and I, I was like, oh my God, that's an MP3. They're playing an MP3 on the radio. Uh, I'm an audio engineer. No, it's a humble brag here, but I'm an audio engineer. I can hear. Um, I just hear MP3s. And I'm like, that's that's an MP3. That's not an MP3. There's it's real subtle difference. But when you're in your car and the music's cranked up, I'm like, this is weird. The radio station actually radio station because you can fit a uh, my entire CD collection of a th more than a thousand on a on a thumb drive nowadays. Um, digital uh, a CD is about 650 a full CD is 650 uh, megabytes so it's, it's two thirds of a gigabyte and now we measure our drives in terabytes there's no reason other than sending this information over the internet to all these radio stations everywhere that's the reason they use the lower quality things no one's sitting there dropping the needle on a record or playing a CD the music's coming from HQ out in LA. But it was a little like, oh man, you know, it's sad. So, um, lower quality digital is great, it's convenient, but to experience records can help you enjoy music in a different way. And so that's, uh, those are the reasons, so there's three of them, I guess, that, um, I'm going to listen to the Beatles Revolver on a record. It's going to sound tremendous on like pretty good stereo. And uh, and I'm not saying I'm going to enjoy it more than you are, but, but maybe I am. My record's going to sound better than your MP3. And <laughs> not to rub it in. Um, so, that's the summary. There's a lot I left out. There's a lot more to say, but that's just a brief kind of almost a defense of records and um, a uh, brief uh, um, summary of uh, different kinds of musical formats. Hopefully that was pretty understandable. Um, if you liked it, uh, leave a comment or a like. If you didn't like it, then don't. No, <laughs> you can also leave comments and such, but... Um, uh, uh, just be nice, be uh, constructive in your criticism. So thanks, have a good day.